Um, I would just like to express that I don't understand how this has been painful for an individual when they get paid and do nothing to earn that. Nothing. They do nothing. They do no physical labor to earn what they get as compensation here on TSAC. Makes no sense to me. They don't even show up in person. They, they do not even show up in person. And if they do, it's very rarely. Um, so there's that. Second, um, we have given you the chance. As a matter of fact, you had a little over a month to come to I specifically. I'm t- speaking to Alan directly. You had the opportunity for over 30 days, way over 30 days, almost like nine months to come and apologize to me and to Taylor. Not once did you reach out to me via email, text, in person. Um, shoot, you could have sent a letter at this point. You never once tried to apologize for me. But now that you get your rights back in state, you think that it's okay to say that, oh, I want to apologize to you? I don't want your apology. I don't care about your apology. Thank you. If I had an asthma attack yesterday, I almost fell off the tip of the gym, out of breath, and was breathing. I would have been here earlier. And what I came over here today is breath is more important than any budget. And got me almost dying, and I am dealing with cerebral stenosis. I'm put to point of order. We John. can't hear you, John. The people online cannot hear you. No, you don't have a microphone. I would motion to give John uh, some time to speak here. Okay. I interrupted on purpose because this is life and death to me. I, John Nelson, had an asthma attack yesterday. I was at the Tivoli building, and everybody around here knows me as Mr. Happy and, and all that other kind of stuff. However, I was gagging for my breath. I was at the Tivoli steps, and I almost fell because I couldn't breathe. Before I even got there, I was walking, and it looked like I was okay just moving because people see me as very bubbly. And people were ready to help me. They was like, is there anything going on? I didn't know. I sat there and could not breathe at all. I was talking out loud to God. I said, God, is this it? Am I gone? Is it? And I, I, I was literally choking. I got a phone call from a gentleman named Steve. I've never met this man before, but he's been communicating to me. He reminded me of what I forgot. He said, count to 10 and catch your breath. I counted to 10. I closed my eyes. Once I closed my eyes, I was able to just relax and breathe. I went on to class to go with the choir and stuff because I had some other commitments. However, when I got home, I rested and I realized that health is most important than anything going on. The only reason I'm being this bold is because I want you to put attention on the fact I requested a bike under the umbrella of exercise. Y'all can go back and forth with this any kind of way you want to, but you can put it under professional development because I've gotten assistance through CMERE under professional development. I'm putting out my business with me experiencing this new asthmatic situation and the fact that I'm dealing with cerebral stenosis. Now, I don't mind sharing personal business when it comes to health because it's necessary. And that's what I'm going to say with that. I got some things that I that y'all can pick up. It talks about the health and then some other situations with Next Agenda where we can deal with some issues with Uber and some other stuff that's going on. But this is the last time I'm going to come here and say something about this because I'm not into a remix of meetings and all the other kind of stuff. I don't need to do that. It's time now for action. Make the vote. If the vote is said no, then I will go on to another scenario, but then it will be known to me that the student council collectively, it's nothing against y'all personally, collectively, it's too much stagnation. It's too much back and forth. And after me having an experience with my breath, that's the most important. And that's all I'm going to say on that. Here's some information y'all can pass along. 
If you have any questions, y'all know how to reach me. I want to have an answer before March the 17th. Naomi and I had communicated, so she's aware of that. But the answer needs to be drawn. Thank you, and I'll talk to you later. And I want to, yes, go ahead. Uh, I would just want to know if you wanted to stick around. We do have um, your bike subject in our agenda today that we're discussing the attributes of how we're going to get this allocated for you. So if you just wanted to, if you had the time, if you don't completely understandable, but if you did want to um, wait around to talk about that, we we extended the meeting as well. How long is the meeting going to last? So many point of, point of clarification for that, John. I'll tell you, it's the very last thing on our agenda, and it was really just going to be a reiteration of the of the information you'd you'd given uh, us last week. Yes, sir. and so. Um, essentially, like the idea in adding it to the agenda at the beginning here was to was to be like a reminder that like, you know, let's get moving on this. Yes, sir. And so, but it's at the very end, so I don't, you know, I want to give you that information. I can pop back, but I'll leave some documentation that I typed up. It's passed around. I also have ideas for net, because see, I'm the type of man. I'm 56. So it is about me and it's not about me. I've got some other suggestions about Uber. Uber and Lyft has been an issue with the GPS system here where it's been given wrong addresses. And I'm a peaceful man and sometimes I rendezvous with people who are not so peaceful. I've got some suggestions on how to extend the range because I've worked with Google before and I'm technologically savvy. So. All right, y'all. I apologize. Point of order: We do need to move back to. We have our barely made it agenda. through our okay. our committee. Thank you, Chad. Thank you for that, John. Um, James. Okay. Um, no, we will. On to the TSEC Public Relations. Committee. We had a vote no, on the table we, before oh, we were right. instructed. <laughs> so we need to we need to call the question on removing the. Uh, um, Yes, yes, Dr. Barone. OK, um, thank you, everyone. I just wanted to, first of all, say I know this has been super challenging. I think this has been um, a learning process. I want to remind us all that you all are building the foundation of something that has not existed and does not exist um, that we know of in this model. Um, for shared student governance. And so this is really hard and it's uncomfortable. And I have had a lot of meetings with a lot of people and spent a lot of my time and energy on this, not because, well, part of it is because I have to and it's my role and part of it is just because I care and I want things to go well. I don't think there is a right way to do this, but I do think that your investment, your time, your energy, people's opinions and uh, their input and their feedback. And I appreciate everyone's passion as it relates to this topic, because that means you also care. And at the same time, I want to remind us that as we move forward, that there is no one path. There will be many paths and options on how y'all determine as a council to move forward. But I really appreciate the conversations that I've had with you all and um, and my team, um, who is the Dean of Students Office around this, um, because we want to make sure that we are building a solid infrastructure that is sustainable and that is healthy and that promotes a healthy campus for our students. And so just know that um, that that is where I'm coming from at this. And um, this is part of growing pains of this council um, and something that we will be here to help support um, and yeah be here to help guide in whatever ways makes sense but at this to Mike's point earlier you all do have the authority and the ability to make your own decisions clearly we are just here to help support and guide um, and provide input and feedback as you want it and as you will receive it so I just wanted to offer that and the intention. Um, I'll have more information next week about um, some ideas and thoughts around how we can hopefully can move forward and have some team building and community building and healing, I hope, um, as we move forward. So I just wanted to offer that um, and say thank you to James and the Judiciary Committee because they have put a lot of time and energy 
And um, this has been really stressful for everyone involved. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Barone. We are calling the question now. We are past, We are well past our uh, our time frame that we allotted for us. So, Mike, do you mind should we explain? So, the motion that we are voting on now is to reinstate the the powers that were removed from Allen, um, giving him the ability to vote on motions, resolutions, and amendments. My vote is yes. James. Yes. Chad, yes. Taylor. Taylor, yes. Naomi. Yeah. Paul. No. Um, Alex. Um. Did, was that an affirmative, an aye? Uh, no. Can you type it in the chat? You're muffled. We'll move on to Re. Yes. Gabe. Abstain. Stephanie. Abstain. Dan. Yes. And Alex was a no. Go ahead. Okay. The whatever motion resolution has passed. Um, on to the next order of business. The TSAC PR committee. Chad. No updates. Okay. On to the next order of business. Policy advisory committee. Re. I'll just touch on this briefly because there's a lot we're going over. There's a new work group that I'm part of for data classification policy. So it's all about information security that has to be agreed to by all individuals before anybody can access university data and IT. This is new. It's done by all other universities, but we are going to work on this now. There was also discussion at the meeting this week um, that's about the Associate Vice President of University Advancement spoke about proposed changes to something the Board of Trustees is in charge of, which is naming of facilities, endowed positions, and honorary grants. They're trying to establish something to um, bring in more donor money to help the university by naming positions and buildings and things like that, like other universities do. So those are the two things working on for Policy Advisory Council. Thanks, Re. Under Re with Faculty Senate Affairs. And, uh, thank you so much. I'm really happy that we um, were present at the Faculty Senate meeting this week and Taylor and Chad presented beautifully our goals, our vision and mission, and then the ask that faculty uh, will share questionnaires, Qualtrics questionnaires we ask of students, and we feel like we'll get better cut through this way. So it was well received. And at the next faculty Senate meeting, Mike is going to be there and reading the resolution that he proposed and we all passed in support of faculty. Thanks, Re. On to the Indigenous Student Resource Committee. Naomi? Uh, yes, so we will be meeting again on Saturday to discuss some um, ICWA mobilization. Um, I'm going to reach out to the uh, members of NISA and see if we can create space to see how we can get the majority of Indigenous Native students on campus, um, their perspective on what we need to do to get a building representation for us on campus. Um, also, we have a resolution in the uh, words, uh, <laughs> the agenda for student engagement package um, to make sure that we are getting uh, the students input um, from the best of ability so we can advocate for them. And uh, Paul. Um, I just wanted to encourage folks to uh, vote for that resolution we're going to have because it's really going to feed two birds with one scone, I'll say. Uh, because ultimately we'll have um, a really good way to hear about student perspective in addition to advancing the work we have on an indigenous student representation um, and some cool prizes which will increase engagement with the student community and so this is checking a lot of boxes for everybody I want to encourage you to vote yes on it. Dr. Brown, do you have a response? Question. Fine question. On the survey that you all are talking about that you're planning on doing for students is that a survey that's targeted at Native Indigenous students or all students? 
So we have uh, two separate, we have one specifically for Native and Indigenous students, and then we have one for um, like student body, like general questions as well. So we can see um, what generalized students, like just the general student population needs help with uh, as far as like engagement, and then one specifically for Native and Indigenous students. And we'll, it, we mostly BIPOC community is how we targeted it because like everyone is Indigenous, if you're in the BIPOC community, you just don't know it. <laughs> Right. So I have, sorry, I'm, I just need to say this because Desiree Richards and I are working on a survey and that we've already framed it out too. So I'd love if we could talk offline about that and co either coordinate, collaborate, or figure that out because I worry that if we duplicate efforts, that students aren't going to want to fill out anybody's survey <laughs> and if we're all in it for the same reason. So can we just talk offline about that before? Yeah, of course, do you want us to... Is it still cool that we keep our, we pull up the engagement package as well? Because that's how we were going to have students take it. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk offline, but yes. Can we please? Because I worry about not, yeah. <laughs> Native Indigenous specifically survey. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, please. Thank you. Sorry. Wonderful. Thank you, amazing people. On to open floor announcements slash updates. Yes, Paul? Thank you, and I'll try to make it quick, but there's some very important stuff I want to discuss here. Um, truly, so people can, people can yawn. But, um, so I have heard that the student government podcast took place, um, and I believe I was excluded due to my uh, perceived radical views. I think as a student government, we should strive to represent a diverse range of perspectives and allow for all open and honest dialogue on all issues. Excluding certain members goes against the values of exclusive inclusivity and free speech, truly, if we're going to be talking about that. Um, third, we have repeatedly asked um, to meet with the new accountability structure to finish up work on the membership handbook. And I say we, I mean the former governing documents committee. Uh, but these requests have been ignored. The lack of follow through on important projects is unacceptable and hinders the progress of our student government. Um, again, like I said, we need to work together to ensure that our student government is transparent, uh, inclusive, and accountable to everybody. Um, on my next point, uh, there are several pressing issues related to the accessibility on our campus. First, it's come to our attention that the university administration has not responded to our call for an increased attention to accessibility. Their lack of response is concerning, and it puts the well-being and safety of students with disabilities at risk. Secondly, I would like to bring to your attention the fact that our student government office has no wheelchair button. CME's office wheelchair button is not functioning properly, which is another example of many accessibility challenges that students with disabilities face on our campus. And finally, I would like to draw attention to the fact that MSU Denver clubs are meeting in classrooms with no wheelchair access. This is unacceptable, and we need to address this issue through organizational training that CMEI puts on for student org leaders. As a student government, we have a responsibility to ensure that our campus is accessible to all students. We must advocate for the rights of students with disabilities and work toward creating a more inclusive and accessible campus. I urge all council members to join me in calling on the university administration to respond to our requests for increased attention to accessibility and take concrete steps to address the issues that we've identified today. Let us work together to create a campus that is truly welcoming and accessible to all students regardless of their abilities and finally i want to speak to hunger insecurity dear council members colorado families facing food insecurity are at a critical juncture as federal snap benefits have been cut leading to major reductions in aids for hundred in aid for hundreds of thousands of coloradans the state is working to finalize an emergency response fund of 14 million dollars but we must take immediate action to support these families in need this is important because 53 million dollars in funding for snap will be leaving the state as a result 53 million the snap outreach program is an essential state-funded program that educates families about SNAP and helps them access the benefits they will qualify for. With over 30% of families not yet enrolled, it will certainly not help advance the fight to eliminate food security in our insecurity in our state. We must urge the Colorado legislature to fund this program at $1.5 million to ensure that families, individuals, and older Coloradans receive the support they need. As members of the student government, we have the power to make a difference. I urge each of you, all of you, personally to reach out uh, to our state legislature via email and advocate for the funding of the SNAP outreach program. Let us take immediate action to support our community, and ensure that no one goes hungry. That's all I got. Thank you, Paul. I love your passion. On to Mike. Just respond to one thing there, because I was the unofficial leader of the accountability committee. I'm going to speak to you as a colleague. I'm overworked. I cannot do that anymore. I got a few good amendments out of it. That's why we have a judiciary committee. That's why we have new rules out of it. But as a colleague, I've, I'm way overworked. So this is me formally withdrawing from that committee. 
I can no longer handle the bylaws. I just passed sick as bylaws, and now I need a vacation. So that's just all I'll say on that. It's not a dereliction of duty in any sense of the word. Because the way it was described seems like I'm just derelict in my... No, that's not it. I'm overworked. I need you as a colleague to hear that. Thank you. Thank you for your vulnerability, Mike. Uh, does anyone else have an update? Okay, seeing none. Amazing. On to our advisor updates, but Dr. Brown stepped out, so we will come back to that. On to our elections updates. Uh, for the sake of time, no updates. I'm here. One. Oh, sorry, Armando. Go ahead. Um, I just had a few things. Um, as we mentioned earlier, register for Spring Fling. I will drop the link to register for Spring Fling into the group chat if y'all choose to table for that event. Um, I wanted to get more details as to what the council was intending on purchasing for the fair housing event. Um, we, as I had mentioned before, it's not just a four thousand dollar donation that we can hand over. Um, nor can anyone step in to just give that money from our state budget. It has to be direct line items that we are looking to provide for these services. Um, so if whoever, I know Gabe and Paul, you are interested or you are part of that committee, I met with Mike today and he said that he was trying to figure out details. So as soon as we get that, please let me know so we can <clears throat> put our money where you have committed. Um, marketing for candidates has begun. If you are interested in running again, just please be mindful of the timeline that we had shared with you all. Uh, candidates cannot begin to campaign on running nor hand out any materials to the community in relation to their running until March 10th at 8 a.m. So that and then my last question was going to be for the Student Government Institute if we were interested in sending um, any members to that as the registration is opening up for soon. That's in uh, beginning to middle of June, but I had gotten word that we're probably going to wait for the new council to come in to give them the opportunity to attend. Gabe, I see your hand. Awesome, yeah. Um, I'll just like team you a message uh, after this meeting with with like what I know for the fair housing event. Thank you so much. OK, thank you for these updates. And if Dr. Brown has one, we will come back when she returns on to our First order of business, which is our old business, the student allocation request from Blair from Pi Sigma Epsilon. Go to Mike. So, yes. So, Kenny, do you mind pulling up um, the. It's resolution shaped. Um, it's I said, I, I said that yesterday. I, did, I will read this um, a little context just to remind everyone. Um, Blair Waited of um, Pi Sigma Epsilon, the VP of Finance, presented to us last week. Um, a wonderful presentation on us donating some money to send their group to nationals this March, um, right, right around the end of March. So um, I have went, me as budget chair, I have taken this on and I have written the following resolution to be passed by this body today. Um, some context, this vote needs to pass by two thirds as accordance to our bylaws. Um, and um, I'll, be, I'll just go from here. Could I, could I make a motion? Yes, and that's in the lines of what Chad said. If this is in line with what was uh, talked about last week, let's move to question because I, unless there's any new information, maybe we could condense the new information. What do you say? Yes, there's no new information. This is just me putting what was asked in words form. All right. Uh, unless someone wants and I to second read. your call to question, Paul. Excellent. Perfect. Okay. Sorry. No, you're no, you're totally good. Thank you. <laughs> really is good. anybody against calling the question and would like to have discussion on this? Hearing none. Done. All right. We will call the question now. Mike. St I abstain. All right. Um, James, we'll come back to James. Chad, yes. Taylor. Taylor, no. Um, what else am I missing? Uh, <laughs> Naomi, sorry. Uh, yes. Uh, Paul. Yes. Dan. Yes. Alex. Alex, could you put your response in the chat, please? Um, Gabe. Abstain. Stephanie. Abstain. Re. Yes. Alex was a yes as well. Alan. Yes. All right, and then we'll go to James one more time. Yes, yes from James. 
Give us a moment, please. It passes. Congratulations, Blair. You are now going on your trip. Uh, just Excellent. One, a quick comment. Uh, can we meet so we can allocate and figure out what it is you are looking for funding? Because there are certain things that we can. Yes, uh, I was just about to task Mike with meeting with you to work through the logistics of those next steps. Yes, Armando, I will schedule a meeting between you, me, and Blair, and probably the president of Pi Sigma to work out next steps. So thank you. Wonderful. All right. Um, new business, item B, uh, amendment on filling vacancies. We'll move to Taylor. Thank you. Um, so do you all want me to read it or have you all looked at it? Yes, I will read the abstract. That is a good point. Kenny, can you pull it up for me, please? Um, do, 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 do. OK, so here we go. It is very short since this is a constitutional amendment. When a vacancy occurs on the council, SGTSEC will utilize ranked choice voting when possible to fill the position. The election results of the most recent election will be retabulated as if that former candidate slash former counselor were disqualified from the most recent election. The new victors will be drawn from the retabulator results with the expect exception that no sitting council member may be removed based on the new results. If the first place victor declines the position, then the next place victor will be contacted and so on. If in the event that all victors reject the position, only then will a special election be held. OK, questions. Can we move to call the question? Second that. Reed, did you? OK, OK. Is anybody opposed to calling the question and foregoing conversation or discussion? I would suggest we vote by opposition as well. OK, who is against this? <laughs> OK, no one is against, so it has passed. Hey. Great. On to my next resolution, which I shouldn't technically be leading the meeting if I'm talking about my resolution. On to the next resolution with Taylor. And you, can you pull that one up too? Thank you, I appreciate you. I can just like give a little summary while we wait. Um, so basically in the elections code, part of something that I didn't like was that right now we alloc we have it set so anyone can spend $500 on their campaign. Like this can be from donations, from their personal money. I don't like that because it gives rich students an advantage. Um, so instead I have essentially lowered it to $200 they can spend from donations and personal money and um, also to set up a fund where stu students can request up to $50 to spend on their campaigns. Looks like we have some uh, discussion. Go to Mike for yeah, response. So um, I'm out of fight at the moment. So I'm a little tired. Um, I will, I have um, kind of learned my position. Um, I don't 100% love this. Uh, first of all, we are not allowed to give students money for I don't think it's the job of the student government to fund elections in that sort of way. I think it's kind of a really weird, weird thing that another school does. Um, secondly, I think that amount. I mean, I, I can agree to the amount being lowered, but I think to 200 is quite a bit. <laughs> and um, I think like, see, like instead of being against this, I'm more in, like, let's work on this a little bit because I mean, I think 200 is too low, especially in like this economy when it costs more money to cut, like buy flyers, buy paper, um, buy food. I think 200 is way too low for, for that amount. Yeah, in response to that, um, I'm fine with raising it, um, but I do think it would be really cool for us to give money to candidates because 
I think it's like a fair elections type of thing. Like there's a lot of students on this campus who may not have like the financial resources to be able to campaign. And this will at least let them be able to print flyers, which I think is the bare minimum. Um, on to Nate. Sorry, that's your job. OK, did you did Paul, did you have your hand up? Yeah. All right, sure. we're going to go to Paul and Mike again. Um, I unite with the idea that we should provide um, like a base level for students who may otherwise not have access to printing. And so I, I think the $50 is a, is a good idea. Um, yeah, and um, I also agree that maybe it shouldn't just be 250, though, to be honest with you, I'll, I'll say in Students for Democratic Society, we've spent less than $200. And I know you've all seen our flyers all over the place. Um, part of how we've done that is like a heavy utilization of our lab printing. Uh, that's a, that's afforded each student, and so um, maybe we could help raise awareness about like the surplus of lab printing and how a lot of students don't even use it. So get with your friends, find out if they were willing to donate their lab printing fees, and um, while that's still something that should be accounted for and reported to our elections manager, um, it's another source of funding I think we should think about. So essentially, it'd be like fifty and twenty five. So a pretty good amount of money to work with for flyers, Mike. Then I will pro propose a friendly amendment if you if you might, and, and then afterwards, anyone someone asks me the answer the question whether this is like two thirds or majority. Um, so, and this is also contingent on Dr. Brown's telling us how we give students this money. Also, I think two thousand is a little too small for that because it only lets like forty people use the fund, and the our elections are notoriously big. So, um, then let me make this friendly amendment. Um, instead of two hundred, um. We'll do like 300, I'm sorry, uh, we will do 250, but um, my thought is that $50 would add on to that. So you can spend 250 of your own money and it goes to 300 if you want to use student government funds. What do you think, Taylor? I am completely fine with that. And just to be clear, the $50, it is up to $50. If you only need like 10, that's fine. And I think what you said about only 40 candidates, that's, I don't think, We've had 40 people running for student government in quite a long time. Um, I know Paul has questions. I also want to make sure this is all fine with the elections people yeah, before see, we vote on that too. I did see Chad had a comment potentially as he is our elections manager. We'll recognize him. Um, yeah, just quick uh, clarification or if you could add clarifying language, uh, I believe it says to be approved by the elections team. And I just wanted to know, like, is that are you intending it to just be to the discretion of the elections manager or like what what was your intent with that? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I do think it should be separate from the student government since I think that would. I don't think that could that would look too good. So I do think it should be with the elections team, um, whatever that looks like, either just one person, two person based on the year. Go to Paul, then chat again. I am unfriendly to the friendly amendment, though it's not my call to make because I didn't write this. Um, sorry to be unfriendly. I just uh, I fear that if, if we have this kind of you have to spend 250 before you get the 50, that cuts out the students that would need the 50. So I would urge some reconsideration at that point, maybe a way that like, you know, students that lack 250 can still get in on the 50. Point of clarification, that's not what that amendment. My amendment was to you can use $250 of your own money but you can also use $50 from the student government. So you don't need to, you, you don't need to spend that much to get that much. This is just saying, hey, you can use three, you can spend 250 of your budget, of your money or donations plus 50. So it's not, yeah. Thank you for the clarification. I withdraw on my unfriendly behavior. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. All everyone. right, Chad. we'll go to Chad, Gabe, then Dr. Barone. Um, and then one last question, is that uh, 2000 or whatever amount, uh, is that going to come out of TSAC budget or elections budget? Um, I think it can come out of TSAC's budget. I don't want to touch your budget for this year, especially. All right, we'll go to Gabe, then Dr. Barone. Uh, I'm good. I, I just uh, had like a, con like a question about it, but it was answered um, with previous people's comments. So thank you. All right, Dr. Barone. So just as a point of clarification, if $50 is coming through potentially Chad, like at Chad, Chad or this team's discretion, how, 
I'm concerned about like how that $50 will be, not how it will be spent, but how we will get that funding to the students. And so just because of our, our policies and procedures around funding and how we pay for things. And so I wonder if we might instead be able to quantify like printing in terms of like, I don't know, 500 flyers or, or quantify it that way as printing as opposed to a dollar amount, because I, I just worry that, I don't know, I just don't, I think that there's a different way that we might go about articulating what that amount is, and maybe we need to have further discussion before we do that. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, would you say in what would be better, um, your example of the, we will pay for 500 flyers to be printed? Mm -hmm. Something similar to like, you know, like student orgs get printing mm -hmm. in CMEI and they get a certain amount. I don't know what it is right off my, the top of my head, but they get a certain allocation for a student club, right? To be able to print or do certain things. I wonder if that might be a better model. And that's exactly why that's set up the way that it is, is because we can't just go around paying for things um, in that way. So I just think if there's a way, and that's probably what it would be for anyway, right? Like printing or flyers or those, or materials potentially like poster boards, or I don't know what, but that's just something that I think about. And I think that, yeah, we might need to flesh that out a bit more with the elections committee potentially input, because they are the ones discerning what that could look like before I think you can like make a determination on this. That's just my input. You can do what you want. <laughs> uh, I just want a point of clarification. Could we count that printing as like the or I guess let me just back it up. Better question. How about uh, like an amendment? I guess then I would be proposing. How about we submit a form for what we want purchased in regards to how we want to campaign so that way it can be then approved or denied so that way we can allocate those funds directly to what we need purchased for our things, because listen, I'm trying to get t-shirts. So listen, um, there's that. I like oh. that, oh. um, sorry. Um, I like that idea. Um, maybe we can make a list of certain things that can be requested, like a list of materials. <laughs> Paul, then Mike. I wanna I want offer a friendly amendment that may um, resolve the difference between what Dr. Barone is suggesting and what we're suggesting with it. Um, and if we were to say, I'm trying to think the least amount of words you could put in here, each candidate can request up to $50 uh, in like in printing allotment from CMEI, of which we will allocate $2,000 to offset the cost of printing, right? I know, I just, the way I see it, $50 is $50. And if, if you can save $50 on printing, $50 you can put into t-shirts even. And so, um, that would be a way for us to pass this today and then have it ready to go for the upcoming election. I just want to throw that out there. Just again, adding after the 50 um, in printing allocation at CMEI. Is that something we'd be able to do? You think? I think, I think you need to talk to CMEI before you make decisions about what they're going to do. That's a good point, I guess. So then can I make a motion to just table this? Sorry, oh, we're going to go to Mike and then you'll be added back to the stack. Um, so one thing that we kind of glossed over here a little bit. Um, God dang it, what was I going to say? I, I just blanked on it. Um, uh, go to Naomi than me. I, I, All right, Naomi. I was just going to make a motion, maybe just table this till we talk to CMEI, and then that way we can go forward. Or Second. My, oh, wait, wait, wait. I wasn't done. <laughs> After we hear what Mike has to say, because he does work CME, in CMEI, so maybe he can provide us a response before we have to do that. So, Second. Mike first, then the motion. All right, cool, Mike. I, so thank you. Um, I do work in CMEI. I don't make decisions for CMEI, but I can talk to Todd about it and see what she says. Secondly, um, my thought is so we only have 15 days to market our elections. So, like, once you announce, we only have 15 days, and that is that's rough term time for like printing and stuff. That sucks. So, like, I can imagine a bunch of shirts coming in after elections are over. So, I think if we're going to do something like this, we need to, say, like, create a form or something where we can start doing this in advance. Because if we, if we, because CU Denver has a whole month to market their elections. They start campaigning in on the 15th of this uh, month. 
and that's another thing we'll get to in the elections code. I don't think we should only have 15 days of campaign. Um, but if we're going to do something like this, we need to a market it out well and let candidates take advantage of this now so they can get the materials they need to run for election. So that's my thoughts on it. All right. There is a motion that has been seconded to table this. Do we have a time frame? Um, yeah, just Friday, next Friday. That's Until next about. meeting. Excellent. Um, we'll go by. Is anybody uh, anybody opposed to, to tabling this item? I mean, just because I'm not going to be here next Friday, but uh, if someone else wants to take this on, but okay. All right. What well, we are moving into discussion now. Cool. Uh, all right. Um, Gabe, go ahead. I don't. I I just want just, just wanted to say like. If needed for somebody to present this for next Friday, I can I can, I can do it too. Okay. That would be wonderful, Gabe. Um, yeah, so it seems like we need a little bit more thought going into this, but I do want to make sure that we can get it for this year's elections code because so I'm just I'm just wondering, can we add this in after approving the elections code? Go ahead, Chad. Um, so the issue with this is we can so long as we do this before March uh, 29th um, because on the 29th we start campaigning um, and so at that point it's past the point in our return um, budgeting wise or for changing the uh, budget allowed budget sorry cap. All right call in the question to table this until next week. Mike. Yes. James. Abstain. Chad. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Uh, Naomi. Yes. Paul. Yes. Dan. I think Dan just said that he needed to leave. Um, Alex. Alex yes, says yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, Gabe. Probably yes. Yeah. Uh, we're on to Gabe. Yes. Stephanie. Yes. Three. Yes. And in the chat, Dan supported too. Excellent. And then Alan. I'm a yes. Excellent. All right. Item is tabled until next week. Um, Chad C, you have the floor for elections code. Um, I'll keep it sweet and nice and short, uh, and we'll just let you guys for asking questions or anything like that. Uh, I will say the only uh, thing that I did spot um, that I need to change is uh, I'll wait till Kenny pulls it up. Just a slight clerical error, or uh, yeah. Um, page eight, section three, article two, three point zero seven. Um, so just want to. Uh, just need to clarify that at the end there, it says as laid out in rule five point zero eight, that should be rule three point zero eight. Um, so I'll need to uh, make that change. Otherwise, uh, I have nothing. Um, but I guess uh, just to preempt uh, what I think is about to be discussed, um, I just want to say that the reason why campaigning and such was picked as it was, um, was down to the timeline uh, that we are in and trying to work in the tri-I uh, voting period. So my recommendation is that if, um, if you want to change the election codes to extend the campaigning periods, uh, I, it's my advice that you bring this up to next year's council and try and get the election codes changed then, not right, um, not right before the election is about to occur, uh, because then we're going to have to go one of two ways, either declaring a special election um, or not, uh, or rewriting the entire election code, which means that we're going to miss the tri I voting period. All right, we're open up to discussion. Go, Paul. 
I believe that um, item B under 307, uh, the 25 percent figure of the previous elections voter turnout would amount to like, what, 25, 30 people. Um, and while I think it's good that, um, like, we're, we 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 give a, a, a an avenue for students to raise issues in the referenda, I I believe that might be too low and, and prone to like abuse. Um, and so I would raise the idea of considering like a different uh, metric, maybe um, 10 percent of the student body, um, which isn't an impossible number to like. Uh, to petition for, I don't think, or even less, like 5% of the student body. Like all of this would still be like way more than 25 or 30 people. I, I, um, I would hate to see a referenda proposed that melted down our student government um, and only 25 students support it. And that gets on the uh, referenda. And I don't know. That's just one hypothetical, but I think there's other ways it could be abused. Go to Taylor next. Thank you, Chad. Um, so I'm going to disagree with you, Paul, just a little bit because I think it's, I think asking for a larger percentage of people to vote to remove something than to approve something, I don't think that's as democratic as we should be. Um, the other thing that I want to ask is, um, have you added anything about like a recall vote on a counselor? Um, so that would be covered. That's covered on the next page, page nine, article three. Uh, hold on, let me get back to you on that. Uh, I think I was working on it. Let me see if I actually stuck it in. Did you have another item, Taylor? No. Okay. Um, Paul, back to you. By text? Sorry, I was just having a little chat. Um, I understand your concern about democracy, Taylor. I do think that um, it is. It is. It would necessarily be. Um, I think it would be less democratic for a minority of the of of the student population to um, to. I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not finding the words right now. But I, I do think that um, for big issues, um, even getting something like 500 students to sign on to it would would be a, a greater show of like democratic will. Than say twenty five people, thirty people, um, you know, and so I think part of democracy is ensuring that like the will of the majority is being heard, um, instead of like some sort of like like tyranny of the minority, right? Um, so I don't know. I I'm pushed back a little bit on your pushback, but I understand your concern. I will recognize myself real quick. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we. Uh, that we raise the percentage, keep it in the same like peer view, but raise the percentage to 50% of the number of the previous elections voter turnout. Thus still taking into account what Taylor said, that would, uh, um, because like, if I'm honest, I don't think that we would be able, like a student would be able to really rally um, uh, a, a lot of people behind a singular idea to bring to the student government if that number is higher than the number of people that even cared to vote for the student government to begin with. So that's my motion. I can second that. I like I like 50 percent. Wonderful. Um, we'll move into conversation on this motion. Paul. Um, I'm willing to relent a little bit. Um, what do you say 75% of the previous voting population as a friendly amendment to your motion? And the person who seconded it. I, it was, I we're think, still talking about a small amount of people. Sure. I, I think that 50% is a, is a comfortable number for what we're doing now. The, the numbers that you're going off of are from last year when the elections team only had six weeks to uh, to market for candidates and then get uh, information about the vote out. And this year we have um three months time so we're anticipating a lot of of individuals to be uh um active in the student election i'll point a clarification if it's all right i'm sorry to cut anyone off so referenda for this election would be based on uh last year's or this year's i, I guess it couldn't be based on this year's but so necessarily were anyone to want to bring a referenda it would be based on last year's is that correct yes okay 
Sorry, the okay. most preview, the most recent election. That's yeah, that's not like a special election, right? That, right. That's what it would be. Um, I suppose in the way that this is written, the most recent election was last year's TSEC uh, election. Um, I could change the language to be a general election if that is preferable. The only downside would be then if there was any uh, special election. Well, then the downside of doing that is last year's would be considered a special election, so we couldn't use that voter turnout. So the voter turnout we would be using would be the year prior, which was even less than last year's. Um, I, I don't think it should be a huge deal to say a general election because like going forward, just because like by the vacancy procedures that like we've just put in place, there likely won't be a need for another special election. Does, does that make sense to everyone? Mm -hmm. Minor point of clarification. So yeah. this wouldn't apply to like the special election in which like an even smaller group of people participated. Is that right? It would be the original like 150, 60. Not like, because the special election, how many people participated in it last year? Uh, if you want raw numbers, what I'm referring to is last year was a special election in which okay. 148 people voted. Um, however, it was special because we had to essentially scrub the code and uh, run at the election team's discretion. Okay. Um, and that was the whole purpose of doing this new code. So if we are to go, by the last turnout of the general election, we'd be going off of the 2020 uh, election, which was 124 turnout, I believe. Thank you for the clarification. I'm gonna make a motion that we call the question. Second. Okay. All right, we are uh, voting on the motion to raise the, uh, the percentage to 50% of the number of previous uh, elections voter turnout in 3.07 Bravo. All right, uh, Mike. Abstain. Uh, James. Yes. Chad, yes. Taylor. Taylor, yes. Um, Paul. Yes. We had Naomi, are you in the chat or? OK, uh, we'll move on to Dan. I believe Dan is not in here. Um, Alex. Uh, yes. Yes from Naomi, yes from Alex. Gabe. Yes. Um, Stephanie. Yes. Ree. Yes. Alan. Abstain. All right. So it is nine in favor, two abstentions. All right. Um, Chad will make those edits. My computer has died. So um, where are we at now? Are there any other items in the elections code that we would like to discuss? Chad has another comment. Uh, let me just uh, back to one of Taylor's original um, for a uh, recall election would be 3.09. Uh, would you like me to read it out? Yes, please. Uh, it says, upon a collection of verified unique student signatures equivalent to 80% of the previous elections to voter turnout, a special, and I'll change that to general, um, a special election may be declared by the student body. This recall must be specific as to what is being voted on to be called and may not include anything related to student fees. In my purview, um, what if this person was filled by like a special election? So I'm thinking maybe it should be the the election that the vacant seat was from. Does that make sense? Um, no, I th you lost me. Um, so I imagine like a, a scenario. So imagine like I was, um, there was a vacancy. I ran, I filled it, but then I resigned. I think the, it shouldn't go back to the original like election. It should go to however I filled it if it was a special election. So I think in the scenario that I'm, if I'm understanding correctly, um, your concern is that like 
since we're going off of voter turnout by general elections, right? And if you were to come on by way of special election, but then um, uh, there is a recall vote uh, for you that you would want it to go by the election pertaining to the issue rather than the last general. I got gotcha. you. Uh, I mean, I can't vote, but I say I guess I'm in favor of that. Well, is anyone opposed to that change being made? That's okay. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. I think that that change can just be made then. Okay. Is there anything else to do with the elections code today? Call the question. It's approval. That's Second. what we're doing, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, we're calling the question to approve the the elections code. Is that correct? OK, this is for the whole shebang, friends. Mike is not present. Uh, I'm going to go in order of how this is laid out on our agenda because we've lost some people. Um, um, all right, Re. Yes. Stephanie. Yes. Alan. Yes. Chad, yes. Um, Gabe. Yes. James. Yes. Alex. I believe that was a yes. Uh, Taylor. Yes. Uh, Paul. Yes. Right. And then just to give people an opportunity if I can't see them in the chat. Uh, Mike. Dan. And Naomi. All right, those are abstentions. It passes unanimously, friends. Good work. All right. Yes, Chad. Um, I just want to, uh, so since these codes have been uh, passed, I just want to warn the council that there is, um, if we're going to bring that table object up, um, since candidate applications can start being accepted on the 10th, therefore initiating the election cycle, um, that any any changes to the codes have to be done um, by March 7th at 1159. So in that situation, we would have to have a special meeting, um, emergency meeting, if you will. So this would be to do that thing with um, adding the fund for the students? Yeah, sorry, I didn't even think about it until after it got um, passed. Uh, but in uh, Section 2, 2.02, 2 changes to election codes must be made 72 hours before an election cycle begins. Um, so the other option is to push off the March 10th date. Um, to accommodate, but uh, that's a decision that we ha have to be made. Um, why don't you all talk amongst yourselves first? I would make a motion. Go ahead, Paul. I would make a motion that we exchange that uh, that 10th date for our next meeting date. That way we can, uh, wait, you said before the 72 hour period, Never mind. Um, oh. I retracted my comment. I'm sorry. Yeah, Taylor, if you have something, go for it. Um, I think this would be very beneficial to students um, and help them campaign better. So I do think it would be smart for us to push the day that elections can start back by. Um, well, it would be 72 hours before after our next meeting, correct? So that would be Monday the 13th. 
at like 5 p.m. Is that a caveat? Yes. That we allow students to campaign from the day that was originally proposed for the beginning of campaigns. Does that sound fair? I, or is that when elections are started. When they are started, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm confused. So they, if they campaign, then the election has started, so we can't do that. Okay, okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, so is anyone opposed to the March 13th date? I I am, just okay. because there's such a short time frame where individuals can campaign, and five days of that is spring break, that um, I think it would hinder a lot of people's uh, ability to campaign effectively. Um, I think that it's something that we could bring up to the next council to bring in, but we could also still write a resolution as TSAC to uh, allocate those funds for the uh, uh, the candidates in the election rather than having it implemented in the, the code itself for this term. Mm. If that makes sense. I hear what you're saying. But I do disagree. Yeah, just because I think this would really benefit a lot of students. Um, but I could be wrong. A lot of students might not use it. Does anyone else have any thoughts on this? Gabe? Yeah, um, I also agree with Taylor. I think that while I think, you know, right now we're in a weird situation with timing, right? Um, I still agree that, like, Taylor's resolution really showcases that of, like, fair and equal aspect, in my opinion. Um, and I think that if we wait until like the next elections, then I feel like we just, yeah, I just don't think that would be as beneficial overall and stuff. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I'm all for like pushing it forward or emergency meeting, you know, whatever y'all, y'all want to do. Okay. Um, we could also do like a road on our link vote instead of like having a full meeting. Is that something that we could get behind? I could get behind that, second it, totally. Sure, I mean, yeah, we'll, we can talk logistics on that offline and if the road runner link uh, situation does not work, then we could have quite literally a 10 minute meeting, a uh, 10 minute emergency meeting. Cool. Small point of information. There are some good steps outlined in our bylaws for how to conduct an online vote. Maybe we refer to those, and um, and we also amended, I think, at some point, our ability to hold a vote in teams, even. And so, um, okay. okay, some different methods we could use. Awesome. I think we have a couple of different options that we could uh, explore. Um, the next item of business: the tri institutional elections event. James. So seeing as Mike is no longer present, I would motion that we just move or advance to item G on the uh, agenda. All right. Okay. Yeah. Opposed. I'd okay. like to clarify that we just move this to uh, old business for the next meeting. Um, looks like Gabe has his hand up as well. Oh yeah, just to remind people, uh, we have 12 minutes left in the meeting, 12 minutes. OK, thank you. Cool. So since no one is opposed to moving the transitutional elections event to old business for next week, that's what we're going to do. Thanks. Um, on to resolution to set a date to certify elections code. We already did that, so we don't need to. On to the ISRC survey and raffle. Paul. Thank you. Um, if you can pull that up, Kenny, I would appreciate it. I left that nice copy you printed in my office, so shame on me. Hey, no rush. Appreciate you. Um, just the 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 resolution portion of it, I think, because we'll want to work out the re, uh, the survey with Dr. Barone, I think, so we're not reduplicating efforts in CMEI. So we'll go over the engagement and raffle portion of this. So, um, I won't read it um, unless anyone would like to make a motion that I read it. Um, but essentially, this outlines like a series of like 
prizes, basically, for having participated in the survey. Students will be selected at random. Uh, the total value of the aforementioned items is $579.99, but it amounts to like 10 gift cards, um, I think a, a, a Groupon uh, for a sports massage. There's a few different things, honestly, a pair of beats. Um, and kind of the whole goal of this is to really give students a reason to take our surveys, because I know if anyone else is like me, kind of not very survey prone, but um, if there's a good reason to do it, this could increase engagement by quite a bit, especially if we advertise it well on our social media and with maybe some flyers. So um, I, I would, I think it would be a good idea for us to acquire these items, um, even if we end up not just doing our own survey, but collaborating with CMEI. Um, this would be a good way for us to help CMEI also see more engagement. And I think it's like we can move on with this element and still honor Dr. Barone's is ask to, to um, get together and, and solid, like combine our efforts on uh, doing a survey of the indigenous population on our campus and BIPOC students more, more uh, generally. Um, can we scroll up to the, uh, the specific items? Thank All right. What, what's the third item? So that third item um, is five Takabe gift cards valued at $25 each. Uh, from what I understand, Takabe is an indigenous um, restaurant, if I understand correctly. I'll admit I was, uh, I, wasn't, I was ignorant to it until Naomi told me about it. So, um, but yeah. Taylor. Um, I really do like Takabe personally, um, but I do think having these big ticket items, I don't like that just because I don't know. I think having more of the Tokabe that's serving students more since more students can get those. Did you have a direct response? For? I'm sure you said having more Tokabe. Yeah, having like more Tokabe gift cards and less of the B studios, the tattoo and the sports massage since those are very, very expensive gift cards. And I think giving like one of those like $180 gift card to one student, that's a lot of money. Yeah, so just as a direct response, um, I'll admit I'm more like, I'll say um, the big ticket items really do kind of incentivize the students. And when you're when you're getting involved in a raffle for or a survey for a raffle, you're not necessarily thinking like, you know, there's only one person that's going to get this, but like everybody has a chance at it, right? And so that's what it would increase the engagement. Um, here, let me... Naomi said she might be able to pop in for this portion, but um, yeah, happy to hear more on it. We'll go to James. Um, I'm actually in favor of having a variety of items, especially big ticket ones. Um, I think when you see raffles like this, having variety is a little bit more for me personally, like it's kind of cool to see more stuff than just like one thing. Um, however, I do wonder, Paul, have you looked into seeing if we can also add in like um, those like free parking passes on our area campus? Because I think that'd be like another cool incentive that students would love, you know, just for free parking. I don't know if you've looked into that. So just a question. I have not looked into free parking. I'm waiting back for, hear back from AHEC on all our stinging parking questions. And then I do, I, I worry that if we were to purchase these, how would we maintain positive control of these items so that they don't grow legs and walk away. I would suggest we maybe uh, stash them in Dr. Barone's office or Armando, if either of you would be willing to be our goodie stash for this uh, election cycle. I think that'd be a, a fairly safe place to have them. Just tossing that out there because you have like doors that lock and all that. I'm getting a thumbs up from Armando. Wonderful. Would that suffice, you think, there, Chad? I think yeah, so. I think that makes it safer. I just worry that our office, because it's so accessible for everybody, I just worry. Yeah, someone took my charger the other day, so I understand. And then um, if there's, uh, and then I also, I don't know, I, I think I worry about some of the other items, like oh, specifically, ugh, words, specifically uh, a tattoo. Um, not that I don't enjoy tattoos. Uh, I, I worry that somebody is going to end up winning this item and not want it. 
in the slightest. And then what could they do with this tattoo gift card? You raise a good point about um, about that. Um, I hadn't considered. I will say when I raised the question of having the tattoo gift card, um, Naomi mentioned uh, the ability for indigenous students to you know, tattoo some some like symbolic imagery, cultural imagery um, as being kind of um, as being important, you know, and uh, potential. I want to think how could we. Well, it has resale value, so even if you want it. I, I, I think at the end of the day, it would still be a good thing to win. A Taylor. I'm a little confused because um, I'm thinking back to the beginning of the meeting when Dr. Byrne was talking about the surveys. Um, and how they kind of want to work together on those surveys. Um, I think would would it be smart like to talk to the other collaborators first about like if they have incentives first? Yeah. So friendly amendment that might solve all our problems potentially. Uh, we are in addition to being a student government, a student organization under CMEI. I believe that. All student orgs have access to up to $600 for marketing. And I think that we there's a really good case for it to be made that this is a marketing expense and we could apply through CMEI for funding in this respect and maybe avoid this touching our budget at all. I think it's going to be a hard argument to make for CMEI to be giving us money. <laughs> I'll be honest, like going through the SAB process um, could... NISA request money? Um, I, in, res in response to that, if it's all right, I, um, I want to suggest that we consider how much we give to CMEI in the form of uh, totally sponsoring the Roadrunner Link platform, of which the whole dang operation relies on, right? That's where students are registering. There are student orgs where they're communicating their stuff and posting it. So I think it's a small ask for us and especially a, a justified ask as a student organization ourselves to um, to use some of those funds. And it's dwarfed in comparison to what we contribute to CMEI. And I think by um, providing these incentives for a CMEI MSU student government uh, um, cooperative survey, we will um, we'll, we'll be contributing also to their project over there in a way that's kind of co-collaborative. Motion to table this until we make that change and we revisit it at next week's meeting. Second. OK, um, I don't think we need to discuss this, but we can just start the vote. Unless anyone thinks we do need to discuss this. Please, no. OK, <laughs> wonderful. Um, that's a good call, Paul. We will do by opposition. Raise your hand if you are opposed to tabling this. See in the chat. Nothing. Nothing. OK. Um, so moved and OK. Mm -hmm. I can be quick about the last one. And then Armona did put in here that um, student government does not sponsor the platform. I, I think he's talking about Roadrunner Link. Um, yet we do sponsor the elections module, not the total software. I appreciate that clarification, Armando. Wait, I think we have one more thing on the agenda, but since we only have one minute, I don't think that is a fair enough time. Go ahead, Paul. I will send you this information if you message me. Please message me and I can send you information about this request that John has made. Um, it's not my complete endorsement of the request, but it's a starting point for us to have a discussion in making this happen. I really truly believe it should happen. Um, please get with me, we'll look at this information and um, advance this very reasonable request. John came in clearly passionate about the issue. We should take this up. Um, All right, we're, um, yeah, we moved to the closing. With one minute to spare, we are concluding the meeting. Thank you all good, so much for joining us today. Have a wonderful have a weekend. weekend y'all. Have a good and, weekend. Thank you so much for a great meeting. It was a tough meeting and you did a great job uh, being co-chairs. Thank you. We'll miss you all. I will miss you all next week. Bye bye.